Okay, this is going to be a basic tutorial on how to get started with Maple 18 to do some calculus, um, integral calculus. So, the first thing that you notice when you open Maple 18 is that there's a number of different menus and selections that we can make. And navigating this menu is sort of the first thing we need to learn how to do. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and open a new document. And notice that when I do, the Quick Start menu will open up for us. And this will give us a lot of helpful hints on how to enter things. And we'll go through those in turn as they're needed. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is switch from math mode here to text mode because that'll allow me to enter my name and other things at the top of the assignment. Okay, so it's really important to know how to do that. And then when I want to go back from typing something in to switching to solving math problems, I just go back to math mode like this. Okay, now, and the first thing we want to do um, is perhaps construct a simple graph. So let's suppose I wanted to say that f of x is equal to um, the sine of x. Okay. Now, what this did is the following. This just gave me an equation, f equal to sine of x. But that was a one-time thing. In other words, it was thinking of f as a number and x as a number, and that's it. What we would like to do is for any x we plug in, f is evaluated as the sine of the value. In order to get that, we have to put this colon here. So this is the difference between um, a number x has been chosen and you give me a number f one time versus f is now assigned for any x I plug in. That will be the value I get out. Okay. So there's a very big difference between f equal to x and f colon equal sine of x. And now that we have f as an assigned value, um, an expression like this will work. Let's suppose that I want to plot f, and x is going to go from 0, and the range is indicated by dots. So from 0 is the lower limit. The upper limit, after two dots, I uh, will put in, let's say, um, pi. Okay, and now when I plot f from 0 to pi, it looks like this. And Maple has some nice defaults in here. It's given me uh, some values on the x-axis, some values on the y-axis. If I wanted to plot from 0 to 2 pi, it can do the same thing, and it makes the adjustments accordingly. I could take pi over 4, and so on. OK, so that's plotting. Now, there are some other things that we're going to need to use. So let me go ahead and just clear all of this. Um, OK. Now, the first thing I want to type in this time is with student. And I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of this statement. The semicolon is usually what tells Maple that we're done with what we're saying at the moment. So that'll tell us that that is the end of that line. It suppresses further statements from being made. Okay, and all of these things here, these are certain options that we're going to play with right now. Okay, in particular, we're going to focus today on left sum, left box, middle sum, middle box, right sum, and right box. And we're going to use those to approximate areas under the curve. Um, now, if I have a function, say, sine of x or cosine of x, then Maple can give me the antiderivative of that, and it can also perform definite integrals. But if I have something, say, like sine of x squared, then there is no known antiderivative for this function. In other words, I can't write down a capital F that, when differentiated, will give me this little f here. However, that doesn't stop me from getting a definite integral. It's just that now I have to approximate this integral. And so, for instance, let's say now that I want to set, um, I want to solve for the definite integral from 0. I don't know why it's not giving me a new box each time right now, but. 
num zero, let's say up to pi now, of this f of x, this sine of x squared. Okay? Now we can do that in a number of ways. The first one, let's try it this way. Let's use int. Now if I use int, the way I would tell it that I want to get my integral is I would say integrate f with respect to x from a to b and make sure that you've put the colons in here if you're defining things the way I am otherwise it won't know what a and b are and it will just write this as a generic integral but notice here what happened is just now it didn't know a closed form expression for the antiderivative and so when I write int this is as far as it will go for me on the other hand if I go back here and change this to x Okay, now this integral sine of x, it will know how to do this. Now, if I write with a capital I int, it's just going to show me the expression that I'm looking for, like this. If I put a lowercase i here, it actually evaluates the integral for me. Okay, so now let's see if we can get our sine of x squared to go through with the lowercase i. Okay, and what Maple has done for us is it's been very smart, and it's realized that the sine of x squared, this integral, it has some special definition. But notice that this isn't a number for us. Okay, in order to get a number for this, I'm going to type eval f, which is evaluate as a floating point number or is just a decimal number. And the percentage sign will tell Maple that I want to integrate this last quantity and give me a value there. Okay, and so what this has told us is that the integral of sine of x squared from 0 to pi is this Fresnel integral, but it's approximately 0 0.7726. Now, that's the value that's probably close enough, let's say to the right value, because all of these decimals are correctly in place. They're, the, the next one, we don't know what it is, but all of these decimals are right. We can guarantee that. But now let's suppose instead that we wanted to approximate uh, this integral from 0 to pi sine of x squared. And I'm going to use a certain number of boxes for my left endpoint, right endpoint, and middle point um, approximation rules. So the first thing I want to do is enter a certain value of n. So let's say that n will be 10 for us. Okay. And now, what I want to do next is construct a left box approximation for f from x going from a to b. And the last thing I have to tell left box what to do is give me the number of rectangles, which I've set to be n equal to 10. OK, and so what this has done for us with left box, this has made a plot of sine of x squared. But not only the plot, it's also added in the rectangles, and there are exactly 10 rectangles, each one using the left endpoint of the value of the sine of x squared. So actually, the 10th rectangle here is got a height of 0, so we don't really see that. But here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 rectangles there. OK? So that's how we can use left box. Now, if I wanted to use if I use left sum, and I feed in exactly the same inputs, f, x going from a to b with n subdivisions, let's see what that looks like. OK, and this hopefully looks familiar. This is the sum of the areas of these boxes, actually, with our usual notation, i going from 0 to, to n minus 1 in this case. Okay. And then the last thing we could do then is suppose that we wanted to evaluate that. Evaluate that sum from 0 to 9. And we get 0.78997254588. And the thing to notice is that, like I said, the close enough exact value, the first seven digits of the exact value, or ten digits, whatever this is, uh, 
uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten digits. 0.7726, dot, dot, dot. This is 0.78999. So the first digit is right, the second digit is a little off, but overall this is a fairly good approximation of the true area under the curve. Now, if we wanted to do, say, the same computation, but with a midpoint rule, we would do the following. We would say middle box f, x going from a to b with n boxes. Okay, and middle box will bring up the plot for us. And you can already see just by looking at this visual inspection that the boxes do a fairly good job of overcompensating and undercompensating accordingly. So this area right here is over the curve, but this area is under the curve, and so the midpoint is roughly balancing out the, the um, errors that it's making accordingly. And we get a pretty uh, good sense from the picture that it's going to do a better job than left box did to approximate the true area. So now if we construct middle sum, okay, this is the rule with the midpoint formula. We could do this part by hand, but this is sort of the nice thing about Maple is that there it is for you. That's the formula. And the last thing we want to do is make Maple evaluate that formula for us. Okay, and when I do that, uh, let's see what happened here. Ah, I forgot to tell it the number of boxes to use. That was the problem. Okay, right. And now let's try to evaluate that. And there we go, 0.799, okay. Okay, and then the last one we can do is we can use right box. Take a look at that plot. And we can use right sum. And evaluate it. Okay, so right sum is quite a bit smaller than we would have expected. Okay, now let me point something out here. Up above, when I started doing all of this, I did not have to assign a value to A, B, and N the way I did. I can just type in the numbers here. And I'll get the same thing. The point is that what if I start doing that? Okay, and suddenly I decide I don't want to go between 0 and pi anymore for my integration. I want to go between 0 and 2 pi. Well, if I'm doing it this way, then that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places. I've got to make sure that I've changed all of those. Okay, and so that's really not very fun if we do it that way. So this is why we like to assign a value and just use this expression instead. Because now, look, that's always a always A in all of my expressions. And I'm talking about the same integration problem, so there should be no problem doing it this way. And in fact, watch this. Suppose now that I wanted to use 20 boxes instead of 10 for the whole problem. Well, all I've got to do now, instead of changing each one of these from 10 to 20, I just hit Enter, 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 Enter. Right, and so I think you get the idea. And by the way, let's take a look at the results here. This tells me the right answer is, again, 0.77. Okay, the midpoint rule gets the 0.77 very well. The right end point tends to over, or, sorry, underestimate, whereas the left sum, okay, here it was, tends to overestimate in this case. All right, so this is how we can use Maple to approximate um, definite integrals when we don't know what the actual function, um, the antiderivative of the actual function is, something like sine of x squared. Um, I should point out really quickly though, what if we do have something that we know the, uh, the indefinite integral for, the antiderivative for? So for instance, um, let's just start off with uh, sine of x instead. 
Okay, so I'm going to assign g to be a function of x such that it's sine of x. Now, if I take the integral of g with respect to x, and I don't leave, I, I don't put any limits in this time, what does it give us? It gives us the antiderivative. It doesn't give us the plus c, it's true, but that's okay. We can add that in when we do this by hand. But the point is that now I can take uh, a variety of functions that have known antiderivatives here. Whoops. Okay. Oh, and actually, yes, do we know the integral of log of x? Actually, we don't know that one yet. We will when we do integration by parts, but it still has a closed form antiderivative. Uh, let's see, what about exponentials? Let's try this. Oh, I don't know. Um, e to the 3x. Let's try that. Okay, and it gives us 130 to the 3x. Uh, and of course, it's still easy enough to just go back and um, enter in a definite integral. It's just that now instead of integrating g with respect to x, we integrate it with respect to x from, oh, I don't know, let's pick some numbers here. Let's say from 0 up to 5. And there you go. This is the integral of e to the 3x from 0 to 5. Okay. And if you want, again, to write this as a definition with the integral sign still involved, you can replace the lowercase i with a capital I. Okay, and so that's basically an introduction to how we can use Maple to do integration problems, both approximating problems with left, right, and middle boxes, as well as actually constructing uh, definite integrals and evaluating them when we have them 